Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on Blue. We've missed you, Blue. It's been almost a month. So first we're going to start out and we're going to do some harvest here. We're going to scrounge around over here and over here, and then we're going to feed them up and see what's going on. All right, let me put you down and we'll get started. All right, so one thing that I am going to bring up as, as winter continues is the moisture and the temperature here in the warmer in the basement. Currently, it is 67.8 degrees Fahrenheit, 47%, 48% humidity. And that is 19.9 C, and obviously the humidity percentage is the same. All right, let's get started on the harvest. Okay, so one of the questions that I get, especially during the winter, is what do you do with all of the castings? Well, um, I usually store them in buckets, like cat litter buckets, or um, another tote that is bigger. And as long as you keep the moisture right um, and keep them aired out, uh, the biological stuff in the castings will, you know, continue on till spring. If you let them get too dry, um, I think the uh, beneficial microbes go dormant. I don't know if they entirely die, but I have had success in uh, putting a little bit of food and a couple of worms in with it, and then after about a month of being closed up with some food and some worms, it seems to, and moisture, new moisture, it seems to uh, get going again and smell like normal uh, fresh castings. So that's what you can do if, if you accidentally let them get all the way dry. Um, you can just uh, put a couple, two or three worms, you know, adult worms in there, and they will um, refresh in your casting. And then when it comes time to use them again, then you can uh, pull the worms out and throw them in the garden. And I'm just putting the overs at the other end of the bin. Not doing anything special. Just trying to uh, reduce the volume here. You know, Christmas is coming, which means Am Amazon boxes are coming. Which means we have more bedding. The African night crawlers can't eat at all. Okay, so that's a pretty good amount. I'm going to put that in the bucket. Still a lot of worms in there. I think I'm getting about, you know, 60 to 75 percent of the stuff that I put in the pan is becoming casting. But it is getting a little bit too damp to sift, so I'll give it, I'll be done for right now and we'll do more next time. So I got about a half of a five gallon bucket, so that's good enough. So let's kind of turn this stuff over and see what we've got going on here. Haven't fed at this end in I don't even know, months for sure. And you can see there's still a lot of worms in here. but the castings are, are very much so done. I'm just gonna flip through it, make sure get the moisture even. It helps me be able to sift it and extract the castings. If I uh, 
If I don't do that, then the bottom will be a little bit wet and the top will be dry. And then I can't sift. So it is more important to do this right now than any other time because I want to harvest. Looks like my avocados are doing a little bit something here. More avocados doing something. I can't remember who it was, but somebody gave me the idea that maybe I should uh, put them on Craigslist or eBay or something and help get them a new home, you know, because nobody needs that many avocados, especially not in Illinois. I'm not sure if I could part with them. I think that's the problem. I'm not sure if I, if I grow these that be the only uh, avocado bonsai nursery anywhere because I of course have to keep them small or you know they can't they can't live here can't have a full-size avocado tree growing in the house can't tell which ends up there eh, it'll figure it out All right, so we've gone through all of that. Let me start mounding things up a little farther here. This is part of the wedge method is moving this part down and moving the other part forward. So this is our finished part and anything other than, you know, avocado trees gets, that isn't finished gets progressed onto the leading edge. All right, let me turn you around and we'll start looking at the middle section. All right, so I think I had the worms cleaning out another bag. They definitely got in there and were cleaning. I'll check and see if there's worms in there again later. But let's see what this middle section is doing and how much different is it from where we just were. I see a lot of bigger particles in here. Unfinished bedding, seeds and whatever from the food they were given. So we'll take the stuff that's not done that's big and move it to the end and then just keep flipping this over and lots of worms still in here. I am going to have to start covering it though. The uh, humidity is getting pretty low with the furnace running. It's not continuous, but we are hovering around freezing, you know, plus or minus 20 degrees uh, last couple of weeks. All right, we're getting there. All right, let's move forward a little bit more. Okay. We fed pretty big before I went on vacation, so pretty confident the worms had more than enough to keep them busy. Uh, looks like the tomato has not, these are just the skins. Oh, put them back under there. So there's more than enough food in here to keep them busy. There's probably about 10 pounds, 12 pounds of worms in here. part I'm getting into right now feels a little compacted, probably just due to the lack of me fluffing it every week. Okay, so that was the middle portion. Let's move to the far end. Okay, so this is the leading edge that is being fed currently, and you can see the bedding is very new. You can see, I'm not really seeing any food, except for big seeds, some avocado. I was concerned that I had some critter in here, and I came down after vacation and found birds down here. I, have, I think maybe when my son brought in the bonsais and the peppers, that some birds snuck in in between 
trips, so that was interesting. But I have yet to see any uh, other forms of critters. Knock on wood. Let's see, fine wood. There we go. So keep flipping here. So yeah, this bedding is new, absolutely new. You can still see individual strips that came out of the, the shredder. But that's, that's to be expected. We are in that portion of the bin. All right, let me move you down and we'll get to the part where we're going to feed. All right, so here we are. The bottom here, we've got our corn cobs, our uh, plants that didn't make it. We've got a little bit of the new bedding here at the bottom. Well, let's grab some food. Got my bucket here today. Um, got some bread. I'll break that up. More avocados. But the, or no, this is actually an apple. Where did that come from? Um, lots of tea bags. More avocado. More apple. Kiwis. More avocado. Okay, and then I'm going to give them a good piece of melon, but I'm going to put it, you know, active side down. And then now that I'm back from vacation, I'm going to look in on these guys more often. So we've got apples and melon and, um, course the avocado shells and so also some green tomatoes so let me know what do you think these apples have been frozen they're actually a little frozen right now and then this melon has not been frozen you know let me know what you think is gonna go first okay get them some new bedding top off their food all right Alright, so let's stand back and, and look what we've got here. So moving everything down, I keep creating a little bit more space down here to continue on as I harvest over here. Um, and now I'm going to start covering everything from this far down so that it will um, contain the moisture that's in the bin right now. And uh, oh. Right now, what it's going to be is just going to be a spare lid from a tote. I don't um, have anything else right now, so that will just have to do. All right, well, that's blue for the day. If you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.